My child, my love, it's returned. The long off season is over with. Step aside, big brother, it's Survivor season. The cast for the newest season of Survivor, Survivor 45, has dropped. And due to a certain virus taking me out of commission for the Survivor 44 cast drop, I finally have a chance to actually make a cast assessment and mark my territory on how I feel about the cast of Survivor before the season starts. And this is going to be a pretty simple ranking. 18 castaways, and I rank them from least likely to win to my eventual winner pick for this season. And before I am spammed about how awful my analysis is, first of all, I know, when the first boot of Survivor 44 was my winner pick that I was ready to announce to the internet, I don't really think I deserve any credibility for what I'm going to say about these people, but here I go anyways. And my last note before diving into this cast, I will also have a side ranking going while I talk about this. Let's call it the, uh, the pet peeve ranking. A question that's asked in the cast bios for every season is what are your pet peeves? Those are my absolute favorite questions ever. It's what I look forward to every time I'm reading a cast bio. So I will also be ranking this cast from my least favorite pet peeve to my favorite, keeping you updated on my top three by the end of the list. So when my winner pick turns out to be the first boot of the season, I can still take credit for the people with the best pet peeves dominating this game. All right, time to dive in and cause some chaos for my ranking of the Survivor 45 cast. Making this cast, I had four tiers of players basically dividing how confident I were in these people, and this bottom tier only had one person in it. Basically, the one person I'm giving nearly a 0% chance of winning the game. It kind of sucks because I really am rooting for this person, but Brando Meyer, the 23-year-old software developer, is the only person that I don't think can win this game and it sucks i really relate to brando a lot i think he's a lot of fun i want him to have good experience i want him to just enjoy himself and prove me wrong and go really far in this game but as i stand here just a feeling a gut feeling i've had i don't have confidence in brando a big survivor fan identifies as david wright values someone who kind of will pick up the missing pieces that he drops with an alliance partner but there's just been something in the back of my mind when I saw the cast drop months ago and then when the cast drop now and the promos and everything, it's just not great vibes as far as longevity in the game. And even if Brando makes it far in the game, I don't see how he can make it to the end and win over a jury vote. I just think he's an outlier among this cast. And unfortunately with the cast that I think is fairly strong overall, that is plenty enough reason to be ranked so low on this list. However, pet peeves when someone takes a urinal directly next to you, to be fair, how often is that ever going to happen to you? But if it does... That is an evil, evil person. So this, this is a pretty valid pet peeve, I can't lie to you. One of the biggest things on my Survivor bucket list is to have that Survivor pizza. Kenja McQuarrie, 31 year old bartender, is my number 17. I don't know how I feel. I don't get big fan and I also get adventure journey vibes from Kendra. If you don't know that, pretty much just means that I think she's here for the adventure, for the experience, to kind of enjoy the idea of living on an island for potentially 26 days with no food, no water, blah blah blah. But that doesn't exactly lead you to winning the game or doing particularly well in the game. Despite relating to Carolyn, and I do see people saying that she could give some Carolyn vibes, I just don't think I see it. I see someone who feels good, feels great, great could be a fun personality for however long she's on the season but i don't see that much longevity in the game for kendra and even if she does i just don't know how she wins the game and if i'm looking for a winner i don't see it in kendra and then pet peeve wise people asking her the meaning of her tattoos i personally don't have people asking me the meaning of my tattoos so i don't know what that's like but I can't really judge the pet peeve, but when I'm looking at these questions, I want a pet peeve where I'm like, oh, that is so true. And that one just, it didn't give me it. So pet peeve wise and player wise, I don't see it in Kendra. What's your strategy going into the game? Winging it. Mm. <laughs> 
Julie Alley, the oldest contestant on the cast at 49 and a state attorney. And I really like her personality. I think she's fun. She has a lot of stories, a lot of things, and I think she could connect to people really well. And she looks great, so great for her. But in this game, I don't see greatness here. I think obviously being the oldest one in the cast, it's gonna be hard to fit in perfectly, connect perfectly with these people. She's gonna have to put in some extra work to fit in with them. Like Rudy said, all the way back in season one, there are more of them than there are of me. And I feel like with Julie, there are more of the younger crowd than there are of the people in Julie's age range. However, if she can connect with the right people and get with the right group and kind of survive this early game, which is the part of the game I'm most worried for her, then I could see something happening. But even then, even if I do see something happening and I see her in some form of power, I don't see her being the one to rise to the tip of the crop. So... That's about as much as I got there. And Slurping Coffee is a pretty solid pet peeve. I think obviously that's annoying, but I don't stand around with people who slurp coffee. So it's it's fine. It's a good pet peeve because that is very annoying, but it's, come on, you could do better than that. Just no longer. <laughs> what would he do? What should I do? No, no, this was... Oh my gosh, what would I do? Drew Basile, the 23-year-old grad student, obviously looks like Napoleon Dynamite, and he understands that. And I think that's a big thing for him is that he understands how he's perceived. However, I don't know if that's going to get him very far in the game. I think he stands out like a sore thumb. He's tall as hell. Also, just not the most physical person in the world and in an era of the show that really depends on physicality he's going to have to work hard socially and strategically in order to survive the early part of the game that's the part i'm most worried about drew and even then is he gonna win i mean it's really hard for younger players to dominate this game unless your name is carson from survivor 44 so it's just an uphill battle for drew and i don't know if he's fully ready for everything that he's coming to However, the only reason I have some bit of faith in Drew, the pet peeve when OMG autocorrects to oh my god, that is the realest thing I've ever heard. Spoiler alert, that is the number one pet peeve I have on this list because that's that's the definition of why I watch and listen to these pet peeves because that's something you don't think about until someone says it and you're like, that is the single most annoying thing in the world. I hate when that happens and I feel like that's... Good job, Drew. You may not win this game, but you win the award for best pet peeve, and I'm I'm so here for it. See Napoleon Dynamite. They're gonna see the Nutty Professor. They are gonna see a guy who lives at the library. Hot take here. Katura Tops is my number fourteen. Thirty-five year old civil rights attorney, and I don't know. That's literally the category that I had Katura in. Is the just I don't know how to feel. I don't have strong vibes that she's gonna dominate this game and then i also have fears that she could easily flame out in the game and to be fair the last few people i've talked about i've had basically no confidence in winning the game katur is the first person i'm talking about that i could see a path of her winning the game but out of everyone left i have the least amount of confidence that she's gonna do that i could see the potential of her rubbing someone the wrong way and creating an enemy in the game and in the new era having an enemy is not ideal you need to have as many friends as possible so you have as many options as possible i just don't know if i see it with katura i will say the pet peeve people who ooze privilege are real as hell real as hell those people suck just unrelenting loyalty <laughs> to the point where it's illogical <laughs> sean edwards is a bundle of joy 35 year old school principal and i just i don't know i love him i really want the best for him in this game i mean three words to describe himself connection seeker ambitiously minded magnetic energy if you don't know how to count, that is six words. <laughs> and then also being a day one Survivor fan, one of the only like super duper fans of Survivor on this cast. And I just think that's, ah, I want Sean Edwards to do good so badly, but I think Sean has the single most potential to be the first boot in this entire cast. And when you have the most potential to be the first one taken out of this game, it's hard to make you a winner pick. I think he's going to be fun. I hope he gives us some good confessionals. I hope he gives us some good moments, but I don't know how long we're going to get those good moments in the game. And then the pet peeve, people who think they are better than other people, it's kind of like the people who ooze privilege, so they're going to be right, right, right next to each other.
such a thing as loyalty in the game of Survivor. <laughs> D. Valladares is the only person on the cast I genuinely just have no idea about. If there was a midpoint on this cast as far as the people who I have kind of sort of negative feelings about and then the people above this I have positive feelings about, D is the only person I have no feelings about. 26 year old entrepreneur, really the first Cuban descent player to be on Survivor, which is really cool. A hard worker, started her business at 23 years old and an entrepreneur now but i just don't know like what it, i don't know how to feel there's not too much that it's giving me she's fine i could see good things happening to d and i could see bad things happening to d but it's just d that's about it and then the pet peeve injustice the kids old people or dogs yeah but it's it's not i mean obviously i agree but it's not quite what i'm looking for in a pet peeve i want to be a latina female winner on survivor hey we've seen this guy before bruce is back and i'm just so happy he's getting the second chance and i think things could go very well for him considering last time even if i were to have made my cast assessment i um I wasn't spoiled, but I went into the season with some fairly high confidence that Bruce was the person being medevaced on episode one. So my analysis would have been really biased because I just didn't think Bruce was gonna make it past the premiere. But here, I think being the returning player and having the reputation he has as the person who was on the island for the shortest amount of time ever, I think that that's gonna go well for him. I think people like Bruce. I think he's gonna connect well. I think Bruce, there's almost a 0% chance he doesn't at least make it a decent chunk into the game. I would hope the merge is the bare minimum, especially if there aren't any major swaps on the horizon, which with Modern Survivor, I don't see why there would be, unfortunately. But then when we get towards the merge, if he's there and getting towards the end game, if he's there, is Bruce really going to win the game? I don't know. He's channeling that drunk uncle energy, which we love that for Bruce. But I don't I just I just don't think Bruce can win the game. I just hope he has a good experience. I hope he gets everything that he was hoping for on his first attempt. And that's all I'm really hoping for. So I'm really happy for Bruce. I will be cheering for Bruce to make a deep run in this game just for the sake of it. But winning? Maybe. Also, where are the pet peeves, Bruce? I am so disappointed. It's not your fault. I don't know if they asked you the question, but there are zero pet peeves for Bruce, so I can't possibly make him my winner pick if he doesn't have any pet peeves. Like, what the fuck am I supposed to do? Let's go! <laughs> Sifu. Sifu's a lot of fun. I think I'm gonna really enjoy Sifu on this season. 30-year-old gym owner. Just this big big dude i mean I, I there's he's a big dude and he intimidates me but i think he's just like a teddy bear the only issue i have one he's a super strong dude and i think that will make him a target come the merge time two i think he's going to be a loyal follower of someone i think he's gonna find a group i think he's going to stay with that group and i think he's going to be devoted to that group and that doesn't scream winner to me so i can't pick sifu as my winner pick however He's jacked. He's a massive individual. So I think he's almost set up perfectly for the merge. So that's the reason why he's this high. Also, pet peeve of mean people. Like, yeah, mean people suck, but you, you, you could do better than that. Oh, there's so many better pet peeves than mean people. Hey, you're gonna be stranded on an island? I was like, Mom, it's fine. I'm an adult. I put the other really jacked individual right next to him. It's Austin Lee Kuhn, 26-year-old grad student. This guy is beautiful. Come on, what the hell? I just think he's gonna be a social butterfly with everyone. I think he's going to connect. I think he's a lock for the merge. If he is voted out before the merge, I will, I will do something. I don't know what I'll do, but I'll do something because there is no shot that is happening. This dude is jacked. And that's the same reason reason that he's this low is that he's jacked there's no way these people may let him get to the end of this game even if he's super nice even if he's super savvy even if he's super strategic the fact that he is that jacked that blatantly a target for these immunity challenges those people are gonna snipe him out of this game as soon as they possibly can so i just i don't see it how is this man getting to the end of the game the short answer is that he's not also, biggest pet peeve is any form of waste, which, sure, but like, come on. 
I can find my Amber out there, that would be amazing. Am I delusional for having this person in the top half of my list? Almost certainly, but I don't know. I get something from Emily. I relate to her on so many levels. She is like the don't care, hates everyone, hates everything attitude, and I love it so much. No matter what, she is going to make an impact. She's going to be one of the people I remember from this season. I'm just crossing my fingers. That isn't a two episode, three episode run where she gets tossed out right away. I hope project potentially can see a very deep run from Emily winning the game it'd be a story let me tell you what like if Carolyn won season 44 that would be an insane story and I think if Emily wins season 45 that is an insane story however I just don't have the utmost confidence here when you're told your personality is like chaos Cas, one of the biggest goats in survivor history that says something about your potential to win this game however Chaos Castle's in the final three, top three. Emily could have some longevity to her, and I think that would be awesome to see. This little quirky personality I've been told by this cast that she was just playing Pokemon on her DS all day, and that's a mood. I would be playing Pokemon on my DS all day, every day. Who cares? Like, I love her so much. I am rooting hard for Emily. I'm rooting hard for most of this cast, but Emily is one of those people that I just want to do well so, so bad, and I might be a little biased putting her this high, because in actuality, do I actually think she has the eighth best odds to win? Not really. But I mean, it would be pretty cool. And also, pet peeve, nearly everything. I love this woman. She's amazing. I remember thinking, this might be kind of a boring season uh, because everybody just didn't strike me as overly interesting. And I could write an entire essay already about Caleb. This man knows how to make an impact early on. 29 years old, software sales person, I guess, has done a lot of things in life that he says he's not exactly qualified for, which is perfect. I think he has such a charming personality. I think the entire cast has realized that because he was the one person where person after person after person was mentioning him as the guy who kind of smiled at everyone and seems really charming and nice, but also that could turn against him if people read through that and be like, well, this guy is too charming and nice. And let me be clear, this man is the villain of the season. He, I would be so disappointed because I don't think we had a villain last season. This man, Caleb, better be the villain and be a good villain. He will be remembered after this season, no matter what happens. And I think he's set up for a deep run. I think there are some red flags there as far as potential early boot vibes, but I'm going to choose to ignore them because I think he's the villain and I think he's the season long villain here. But as most stories go, the villain doesn't end up getting the win, which is why I don't have Caleb getting the win. Despite me really liking Caleb, I will be so invested in Caleb's villain arc. I'm already manifesting it all in my head. He's going to do some crazy stuff on that island. And if he doesn't, I'm probably going to cry and sob. So Caleb, please don't let me down, okay? I'm, I'm begging you. Do, do me proud. Biggest pet peeve, people with no sense of humor? Real. We need some people that can make people laugh. Or that are willing to laugh. I wish we had music for him, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I just listened to that little thump thump. You guys don't hear it? <laughs> Get cocaine from Boston, let me tell you. 26-year-old attorney. We got a lot of attorneys here, but regardless, I just think he has great energy. I think he's going to get along with pretty much everybody on his tribe. I don't see any world in which Jake is targeted anytime soon. He has that vibe to him of guarantee merge big player big character people are gonna love him the only issue i have with jake is that i don't know how much he's gonna give strategically that might be the biggest hole in his game where as socially great competition wise i think he's going to hold his own he's not going to be a liability by any means so he is good for the early part of the game but when it comes down to it when it comes down to making those moves getting the people that are best to take out out? How is Jake going to do that? I don't know the answer to that, and that's why I have the biggest question mark on Jake, and that's what stopped his rise up my rankings here to number six. He could easily be amazing, win this game, and I wouldn't be super duper shocked. He's definitely got it in him, but if I'm just looking at this cast, 
not my ideal winner pick. Although I will say pet peeve motorcycles. I think that's genius. Motorcycles are something where like you don't really think about it as a pet peeve. But when I think about motorcycles, I have a negative connotation to them. They suck. They're annoying. They're loud. I don't care for them. Why would I ever ride on one? That is super duper dangerous. Don't care. So yeah, pet peeve motorcycles that is an amazing pet peeve. So Jake, you get a thumbs up from me, buddy. And I love hearing that accent. It's it's doing wonders. I got that notorious Irish whisper. Everyone's gonna hear it, you know what I mean? <laughs> sabaya, Sabaya, Sabaya. This is the biggest what if in my mind. When this cast initially got announced, first was released, I looked at everyone here. Sabaya was my number three. Three. Sabaya, in my opinion, instantly jumped out from the promos, from anything, just her entire vibe without hearing her voice aside from a couple words. Number three. Then got to the bio, started reading things, didn't get a ton from it, so I dropped Sabaya down a lot to number 14. And now here I am having some longer formed interviews, hearing her talk more, and she's up here right at number five again. So yeah, there's a lot of variety with Sabaya, and I think that's the biggest thing you're going to get. Anything could happen with Sabaya, and I wouldn't be shocked by any outcome. I'm going into the season feeling very optimistic about Sabaya's chances. First of all, strong woman, Marine Corps, truck driver, the type of job that people are looking for. They don't want all these white collar business tech people. They want like the the blue collars, the truck drivers, like stuff like this. And I think Sabaya fits that perfectly. I think she's going to be a fan favorite for a lot of people. Hopefully. I love her accent too. If she has the strategic chops that I'm hoping and optimistic that she can have, I see insane winner potential in Sabaya. The only question is I don't know if she has that fully. I think in the early parts of the game, she'll be fine. Get along with people, do that, blah, blah, blah. But when it gets to the nitty gritty and you actually have to vote people out, which is going to happen eventually, I don't know how Sabaya is going to do. And that is the only question mark I have that is preventing me from making her a winner pick because she easily could have been my winner pick. I could see Sabaya winning this game, but there's just too many question marks to, for me to justify a pick that high. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. From super fan to super fan, Brandon, I'm so happy for you. I'm so happy that this 26 year old content producer can live out his dream because that's awesome. That's like everything I want to be. I think he's amazing. I think he's going to connect with people greatly. I think he just has that vibe to him, that aura that just attracts you to him. Be like, yes, be my ally. That's what he's going to be doing to these people. And I think it's going to work. I think as long as he just doesn't get in his own way, he's set up really well to do really well in this game. I would be shocked if Brandon goes home early because why would Brandon go home early? I just don't see it. See, now you're understanding what I'm seeing here. And as a super fan, I think someone who relates the most to Mike White just needs to go far in the game because uh, Mike White gives me everything, okay? A lot of fun, knows the game, loves Mike White. That's basically like the Infinity Stones right there. Like three of them, but like imagine if three were all of the You know what? It's fine. Also, look at this quote. I hate tabletop games. I feel like I give off big tabletop game energy. I'd rather get a root canal than play Settlers of Catan. Genuinely. Is that not the single greatest quote that's ever been said? I love this man. And the pet peeves elite. Adult men who have Snapchat. Brandon, please. You're not my winner pick, but bring this home because that that is wonderful. I will contribute to the tribe. I'm actually not sure. I, I hope I have something. It's your guess is as good as mine. I love Brandon, but this top three was always my top three. Just based off first vibes, first read through of all the bios and videos and stuff. These three were my top three. And I just had to choose between those top three. And at number three is a very popular person. It's Jay Maya, 24 year old singer. Her bio is long as hell, but I just think she is great. I think she's going to connect socially perfectly. I think she has the strategic chops. I think she just kind of fits the mold, fits the vibe of someone who could most certainly win this game. If she sits in those final three chairs, how in the hell is J. Maya not the winner of this game? Now, the only thing is she has to get to those three chairs. That's where all the strategy, all the, you know, you get the game. 
So that's the only reason she's at number three is because I think J. Maya has the highest early boot potential of the final three people I have here. I think of all the three, if one of them were to not make it to the merge, which I do think all of them are going to make it to the merge, but if one of them weren't going to make it, it's going to be J. Maya, just, just based on how I'm feeling, okay? I don't have good explanations for these. This is just pure energy. I have a pet peeve ranking, people. You think I'm taking this super duper seriously? You're crazy. Speaking of pet peeves, slow walkers, that's a great pet peeve. Not outstanding, because I think a lot of people agree. Slow walkers, you suck. Move out of the way. Come on now. We love you, J. Mai. I will be rooting hard for you. I'm rooting for everyone here. Come on. Who am I kidding? People come on the show and they're probably like, I'm not here to make friends, but like, some friends. I'm so so torn like I'm not to be dramatic here but this is like for death with my luck one of these two women are the first boot and the other is the second boot but this is important to me okay but I need to make a decision gotta make a decision and I'm gonna have to leave Kelly behind at number two I love Kelly's energy and vibes that she's giving off right now 30 year old critical care nurse and despite being a recent COVID survivor fan I I think she feels very familiar with the game. And with how I view her personality from the short interviews and questions that we've received, she can definitely integrate herself with pretty much any mix of people from this cast just naturally. Combined with having some physicality to her, I think it could be smooth sailing in the pre-merge for Kelly, which unfortunately for women is one of the harder stages of the game to survive due to the stupid way that the new era decides to exist, but that's none of my business. But a big reason I do have this confidence in Kelly is that I believe she's going to be underestimated. And if she's able to make it to the merge, I have so much confidence in Kelly to socially and strategically not only not become a target anytime soon but become the player at the end of the game and when i'm throwing darts on the board to pick a winner if you are gonna be near the end of this game in my head canon that i'm making up that just gives me a better chance to correctly pick the winner however kelly you are not out of the gutter yet because pet peeve know-it-alls know-it-alls i need more from you kelly come on see i you couldn't pick kelly as your winner pick if know-it-alls is your pet peeve. This is not like that huge, but for me, this is a big deal, okay? Um. <laughs> Despite all the problems that therapists have had in the new era, I have an uncontrollable amount of confidence in Hannah Rose being the winner of Survivor 45. One of the single most important things I look for in my potential winner pick is awareness, but I'm not sure if this is talked about as much as I think it should be. I genuinely believe the most self-aware people in this cast are Hannah and Brandon. But Brandon has a couple more red flags I could see than Hannah does. She's keeping it real. She's not fronting anybody. She's strong to the point where unless she gets in a literal fight with someone, how is this woman not making at least a merge? And I don't see her being afraid to make moves, be cut for throw, and have the resume to win this game. I don't see a world in which Hannah is at the final three without at least having a very, very solid chance of winning the game. And I mean, I'm no math guy, but someone who I think is a lock to make the merge and a lock to win if they make final three, all I need is some luck in the middle for Hannah, and that is the key to success and having a correct winner pick. However, what truly did win me over were the EW videos that they had where Hannah talked about how the other therapists weren't successful because they believed they could read people and because they were better than people because they were a therapist. She's not here to underestimate anybody. And I think that's the greenest of green flags I could ask for. Don't come into the game believing everyone is gonna be swooned by you or you have a leg up on anybody. You don't. That single response there is what sealed the deal for me and put Hannah above Kelly as my winner pick. Cap it all off with a pet peeve of narcissist type people. I adore her. She was just a heartthrob. I may or may not be platonically in love with. Here to manifest an absolutely electric season of Survivor with heroes, villains, big moves, blindsides, drama, and all that in between. And I have faith that this cast can provide us with that. As for this ranking, take this with the tiniest 
tiniest half grain of salt. I have no idea what I'm doing. I have a damn pet peeve ranking going on this whole entire time. Speaking of which, I'm just saying if Drew, Brandon, or Jake win, I'm taking all the credit for the win. My mind will not be changed. On a more serious note, thank you guys for all the support recently on my videos. I don't plan on slowing down anytime soon. I genuinely enjoy making videos and interacting with all of you who choose to interact with me. You'll see some Big Brother content for sure, but I will be slowing down on that as we move into the survivor phase of it all. And I want this to be a great survivor season in all facets, so stay tuned if you love yourself Survivor or any reality TV show, because I can't contain myself at this point. I just saw the House of Villains trailer, and I'm like fully invested on watching that show. I'm not gonna lie to you. It looks trashy in all the best ways. That'll do it for me. I'll see you when I see you. And if you stick around, see you next time. Bye-bye.